from my perspective at least anyway, long time no see. Welcome yes. back. Yes. Uh, yeah. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> um, yeah, anybody want to recap last week? Quartal opened up, Finn volunteered to go through first to make sure there was no <laughs> trap. Uh, and then he was sick the whole time. Yeah, and then we fought a dragon. No, we fought a beholder to free a dragon. You, fr- you yeah. <laughs> Wasn't really a beholder. It was like a beholder light or something. It's called a Garth, I think. Yeah, it's like a baby beholder. Hmm. And we freed a dragon. And got rid of some of the lightning. It was a star dragon, I think, didn't we? Hmm? Hmm? Didn't we get some treasures? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it was a star dragon we saved, and it was uh, uh, before it took off to find its lover. (laughs) It's a significant. She'd been trapped in a in a stage of sleepingness by that little mini me holder, so. And uh, the the holder seemed to really, really like magic items. Didn't eat them, I don't think. Just really was fascinated. Yeah. That helped us distract it while we disabled crystals that were trapped in the dragon. We had found four pieces of magic items in the hoard which the dragon left. Yeah, she left behind her whole hoard of gold and, whoa, shoot, gold, platinum, and some magic items, but I don't remember who said it, but it was like a you know, shopping cart madness. You had to fill up your bags before the portal closed. So. <laughs> <laughs> Get the leak and get out. And we did. Mm-hmm. I don't okay. recall... Sorry? Sorry, I was going to say, it sounds like those game shows where they give uh, shoppers, like, five minutes in a one cart. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. kind of what it was. Yeah. So I don't recall... I know... Raxon kept the book... Yeah, I believe it was a magical book of dragon smut. Right, yes, yes. <laughs> That's what you guys decided it was, dragon smut. Um, I took the mithril shirt. That's who ended up with the mithril, okay. And then I think Vierna got a short sword, is that what we... Or scimitar, is that what it was? And then there was a. Yeah, sorry, it was a. I we changed it to a scimitar from a mace. Yeah, yeah, it was a mace, but apparently nobody here has good strength. So, which <laughs> <laughs> I honestly had not noticed. So, <laughs> so I was like, well, yeah, let's let's make it useful so somebody can actually use the weapon. Um, and then there was also a potion bottle. A vessel that you guys snagged. And I got that Vorpal blade, right? Yes. Right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Vorpal blade. You've got like a thousand musical instruments over there. I don't want to hear from you. <laughs> I know, I'm, just being, I'm just being an ass. The, the, the war loot. Yeah. Melt your face with my hot lips. Yes. Yes, that that is the book that oh. Raxon is reading. <laughs> that's what it is. That's hilarious. <laughs> I think that's not consensual if she's like chained up to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a role playing game situation, maybe. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> he rolled a 20 on his seduction roll, and she has no, no choice no. now. <laughs> The poor DM has to has to narrate the. I actually played I played in that game one time. 
I thought the guy playing the bard was like, went up to the, the monk that I was getting ready to fight a challenge for the key to the dungeon that we needed. And was like, you've been here a long time, lonely, huh? And the DM's like, what? And he's like, really? And he's like, he's like, fine, roll charisma. And he got a natural 20. And I saw the DM just, just like, just this defeat, like, look in his face of like, oh, like, he rolled with it. <laughs> Funny. They just went into the cabin and it was like a cut cut off seat, so we didn't go into detail about it. But it was just funny because we're all like, "Wait!" It's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, the bard just seduced her, and you know, she gave us the key." <laughs> and thus, the hor horny bard trope was born. There yeah. was, yeah. I mean, I suppose it is a thing. Um, and then, yes, you guys were able to leave the portal again once you put a stop to the beholder being and help the dragon be free. And yes, as you said, as you after you returned, you pick, you started watching the lightning more cl closely and discovered that you think that the lightning may be striking those lightning rods a little less frequently than it was before. Um, I met back up with. Amador and Gleam and found a nice little not 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 a cave per se, but a nice little like nook in some rocks to lay down for a long rest. So if you have not made sure you've reset your your hit points and all that stuff, you can do that. Cause you got some good sleep. Um Uh, yeah, Vierna, while you're sleeping, because we haven't done a dream in a while, you, uh, yeah, you find yourself, uh, walking along the edge of this, of this, of a rocky terrain. And, uh, you, you're, you're sort of distracted. You just, you see, um, you're, you're, you're paying attention to where the lightning goes, and you see it going off towards this castle, like, this castle-like building. And... You're a little distracted and you almost fall off the edge when your little fairy dragon flies by and says, Whoa! Stay on track, you gotta focus! Oh, thank you. Um, wow. I haven't seen you in a while, I don't think. Yeah, I suppose it has been a while. It seems like you've been... You've been handling the Feywild really well again. Yeah, it, it feels like home, I guess. Home felt not like home. It was strange. Are we... So I'm trying to remember where we are. Um, are we on the right track or is this is me falling off the cliff more, more a metaphor in more ways than one you'll eventually need to go to there and she'll, she'll again point to this um, castle like structure um, that's where that's where the next hag is but you'll want to be ready in the beforehand. Eventually, yeah. We we shouldn't go there too soon. Um, do you know anything about the the people who live underground? The dwarves? Well, uh, they're dwarf-like beings. They're dwarf-like. There's the Korids and the the Briganox. Yes. I don't know that anybody knows for sure, but they've been at odds at each other forever. I had to guess. Sounds like the doings of an evil hag. I see. Do you 
think if we wanted to help them, who would be the most receptive to mediation first? Um... Let me, give me just a moment to see. Uh, I'm thinking you'll want to stick to the West, the group over to the West. Okay. Hmm. Yes, talk to talk to the Chorids first. I bet they'll be more receptive. Okay. I think that that's helpful. Thank you. We we keep seeming to stumble onto different paths. Sometimes it's not where we need to be, but it works out, I guess. Is Was that dragon the only dragon that has been captured by these witches? <clears throat> Um, by these witches? Yes, I believe so. It wasn't always trapped. How did it happen? Well, Indolin is... When you meet her, you'll see she's truly evil. And... Wanted to, uh... Well, look at the lightning! Wanted to create the atmosphere using... Using the dragon. One more question before... Well, at least one more, but one more, I think. Question that's been bugging me before you go. When when I was here before, I never I never saw anybody die, and that's obviously changed, um, <clears throat> partly by my own hand. But <laughs> is it normal for there to suddenly be a bunch of flies, and for the sky to suddenly get dark? Are are we harming the Feywild by doing this? I don't believe I mean if if you're if you're harming the Fey Wild, like harming the individuals, then sure. But sometimes the Fey Wild will react in a way depending on the person that in this example is being harmed or being killed. So if it's someone evil and they've done evil things, then the evils of the Fey Wild will take will overtake it. Oh. I see. Um a follow-up question. We met a a unicorn in a lake. I I Janae forget their name. But um they warned us not that killing isn't always the answer. Can we stop the witches without killing them? Or is that the only thing that is left for them? Hmm. I suppose you could always... Uh... 
run run people out or trick them into doing something. For she is right, killing is not the only option. You can think more cleverly, especially in the play wild, but then again, if you don't have a choice, such as against an evils such as against evils like that like that, if not today, you may face with that choice tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried that we'll doom another realm to the same fate as what the Fail Wild's going through now, and I I don't want that to happen. Thank you for being as honest as you can be. Well, if I can help, I want to. I know, and I appreciate that. I think uh, <laughs> your advice is one of the main reasons we're still alive. I'm glad to hear that. Um, uh, he's going to start to sort of like like spin around and disappear and he goes, oh wait, before I go it has been a while since we've seen each other. I should have passed this message on to you earlier but why not now? You may recall a while back when you lost your memories from that giant spider. Mm -hmm. um, you may also recall that you you, uh, you got your memories back when you read your names. Just yeah. always remember how important your name is in the Feywild. And how important names in general are. Should probably remind. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> some people, they can do some pretty bad things when they get a hold of your name. Yes. I, I should remind my party of that. I... Well, I'd forgotten. All right. Until next time. Good luck. Thank you. Bye, friend. He whoosh, spins and disappears. Uh, and... And, uh, yeah, at that point, everybody, I believe, wakes up from sleeping. Uh, that's a good sleep. No dreams at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh. even a hangover. <laughs> I did dream, but I, I saw my fairy dragon friend that, well, you might not remember. You've met him. Him or her before. But. I'm dreaming of dragons. You've been reading Rax's book. It's a fairy. <laughs> it's a fairy dragon. One. Two. <laughs> um. It's all good. Ain't no judgment here. Um, they have passed well they gave some information and answered some questions that I had um, first and foremost Bryn especially stop giving your name and our names out to other people then I you probably know this already but we need to be a bit more careful about using our names with strangers it can be really dangerous um, well, um should I introduce this if I can't use her name I'm sorry how am I supposed to introduce this if I can't use her names you can use a nickname just not your full legal documented name nickname you don't 
you don't need to give them your first and last name. You don't need to give them your social security number, you know? What social security? <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> um, but that, that was one of the few direct warnings they've given. So I think we would be best to heed it. Um, and on the topic of being hmm, careful with strangers, it they suggested that we visit the Corvids. Is Here, I'll spell it. Oh, I gotta spell it correctly. There we go. Corvids. <laughs> oh, they suggested that we visit the Corvids first. Um, we should go to the west and meet with those people to see if we can possibly help with mediation between their two groups that might we might gain allies and at the very least we might interrupt whatever um, that which is trying to stir up which is always a good thing in my book yeah I don't want don't wanna play that witch Hmm. I think of names for everybody. So, I I can't wait. <clears throat> what if, Bro, I uh, thought we were already doing that. After all, y'all keep calling me Finn. That ain't my name. <laughs> <laughs> wait, that's not your name? No, nah, it's Finn. You know, like the Forge Glade. Oh. oh. How about how about we call you Gonad the Barbarian? <laughs> <laughs> Huh, go now. Yeah, that's got a ring to it. Have a ball. Oh, how, <laughs> how, how about uh, Trogdor? Now, that's a mighty name. Trogdor. Hmm. Is that with a consonant V? I'm... <laughs> I've got no clue how to spell it, but it sounds good. That's his eyebrows are constant V's. Draw an S, draw a smaller S. Consummate V's. Well, say we have this witch's name. Do we have something? That she has to worry about? What does uh, all this mean? It, well, if we had the right connection, I think we could make her worry. I do not have the capability, but power, if somebody's powerful enough or tricky enough they could cause a lot of havoc with your name I feel like this was important information we should have gotten at the beginning fair um, also as another reminder don't make promises don't promise to do anything I, I promise I won't make any no promises it sounds, right, like you're, it sounds like you're wanting us to be dishonest. You don't have to lie, but you don't have to immediately agree and promise to do something. There are oh. ways of saying you will help somebody without actually saying you're going to help them. I'll have to practice. If you're going to do something, why would you try to find a way not to say that you're going to do the thing you're going to do? Baron just kind of like looks at Finn. He's like, Did, is he not? He's just sitting there like scratching his head. Like he just does not get it. Um, so to the west. That. Uh, Yes, to the west. Um, Gleam is going to speak up and say, 
Well, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> well, we'll want to go south first. I, I, what your friend may have meant was more southwest, because there's not a whole lot to the west here. Um, and you can see, like, where you are, you're kind of on the edge of, uh, of, of, of a cliff area. Um, but if we go just past the Fey Beacons down there, where the prince is, we may still be able to get his help. And then, to the cords we go. Yeah, I forgot about the prince. So did I. <laughs> yeah, I mm, guess we'll do that first. Hmm? What were we supposed to do with the prince? I forget. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Gleam said that he was also kind of imprisoned in the castle with her. And that he was promised freedom but she believes he's still stuck th stuck at this location unable to actually escape and get home um but because of his time spent with indolin um he he might be of some help got it yeah so we'll go find him well lead the way Uh, I believe it's just this way. And so she starts walking. Um, uh, and as a reminder, as you guys are walking, again, every, I'd say, 20, 30 minutes or so now, the lightning is striking. Um, actually, it's it, you've, you've slept eight hours. I'd say it's between 30 and 45 minutes now. The lightning is striking these lightning rods throughout the area. Um and when the lightning strikes, that's when you see a flash of light and, and you all have known Brynn to not have his shadow, but you also see Gleam without her shadow too, uh, which is perhaps you've gotten used to it, traveling with somebody that's shadowless, but perhaps it's still a little jarring and odd to see everyone else with their shadows, but these two individuals. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're, you're walking along these um, very, in some cases, very tight pathways in between large crags of, of mountainous rock. Um, you see these giant, uh, and, and mechanically speaking, they're large, but giant goats sort of hopping along the side of the uh, mountains moving around. Uh, they're, they're mo the, mostly they're the only living creatures you've seen here, um, aside from that, that troll you met way back when. Um, uh, and so you, uh, yeah, you're seeing these goats, and all of a sudden, this one goat kind of comes up to you, just cocks his head, looking at you. Cocks his head the other way, and then his eyes flash white, and this goat will say to you, "When the moon obstructs the sun, creeping Lynn will come undone." And his eyes return to normal. He just sort of looks at you. Meh. Who is creeping Lynn? Don't know, but I bet she's evil, Lynn. Mm. Uh, Gleam will say, oh, that's... That's a nickname for Indolin. Creeping. If you, when you meet her, you'll you'll know what that means. Um, she's creepy, right? Yes, and she also creeps. Like a spider. That's a really great descriptor. Yes. Lovely. Ew. Um. A second goat actually sort of bounds in front of you and similarly cocks its head looking at you. And then its eyes flash white and you hear it say, Play to her passion, stay on script. A cat, a horn, or 
a shadow ripped, and its eyes returns to normal. Meh. Meh. Do they always do this? I, uh... Those are some bad mushrooms. I've, 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 I've never seen the goats do this. You guys never heard of prophecy goats? Uh, I've heard of fainting goats. <laughs> uh, a, a third goat bounds in front of you. Okay. Again, looks at you. Then its eyes flash white, and it and it begins to speak. The fool scepter is the key. And then eyes return to normal goat eyes and meh. How many goats are there? Oh, around you, like like on on the cliff sides, on the mountain side. I mean, you see dozens. We must but right speak. now, it's, I'm sorry. We must go and speak to each one. I'm sure they each have some insight that they will tell us. I have a feeling this stuff's helpful. These are like prophecy goats. I wonder if they well, taste any different. <laughs> I don't think these are eating goats. Prophecy goats was like a band of bards from way back in the 70s. You're getting this confused. There's uh, no such thing. I just knew I heard the name from somewhere. Oh, yeah. So eventually, these three goats will sort of just bound off, joining other goats on the mountainside. Meh. Well, I haven't found the unicorn horn yet. Or a cat. Well, did we find a cat? You can uh, roll a history check to see if you remember finding a cat. <laughs> that, we had the we had the the, the displacer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that count? The, the displacer beast. Star. Oh. Star. Um, no, that's that that is a displacer beast. But you're welcome to roll a, a history check if if you're trying to remember if you found a cat or not. Oh, we yeah. well we found some mutilated cats. Ah. Oh, yeah. It's a creepy doll. Yeah. That we're like, oh, yeah, we don't want this. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I do not know anything about a cat or a unicorn horn, so let's go. Yeah, I'm let's find the prince. We must get Gleam back to her sister, or you must get my beloved to the palace to see Zabilna. Um, so yeah, you guys continue south. South we go. <clears throat> Um, you, and you can see what, what Gleam has pointed out as what's called these fey beacons, these tall pillars that particularly when you're sort of, you know, rounding a corner or coming uphill a little bit, you could see them sticking up, um, amongst some of the tops of some of these smaller, uh, mountainous areas. Um, and certainly as you approach them, you can definitely make out, oh, I want to, there you go make out what they are. Um, as you approach, you see eight columns of rock reach skyward, forming a ring around a deep crater lake. 
rough-hewn steps spiral up uh, each of these columns, and a rowboat is moored on the lakeshore next to one of them. A torch-bearing figure trudges up the stairs on the column nearest to this rowboat. Eight winged beasts with antlers shout and howl with laughter as they circle and wheel around this figure. If you uh, stand there for a while watching, you watch as this figure continues to walk up these stairs. Walking up, walking up, again, being circled by these winged beasts. What kind and of winged beast? Does the, the figure lurk, look concerned at all, or do the beasts look like they're aggressive? Um, the figure, from what you can tell from this distance, looks determined doesn't look like, you know, he's sort of like occasionally trying to shoo them away with his torch. Get out of here, you know? He's not fighting them, but he is trying to, like, uh, keep going. Um, and they aren't necessarily attacking him, but they are uh, just pests. squawking at him. Yeah, they're like giant pests. Exactly. Um, but you watch him finally get to the top of this pillar. And he takes his torch and he lights, you know, must be coals or something sitting on top. He lights it and it catches a flame. He begins to walk down the pillar. And as he walks down, these winged beasts aren't bothering him anymore. But the moment he gets in his boat, they flap their wings and put the flame out that he just lit. And you watch him as he rows his boat to the next pillar. And he begins to climb the next pillar, and they again are encircling him and pestering him. How many wings oh, are there? Pretty pointless. Um, there's there's eight of them. Is that your prince? Ask Gleam. Um, she yeah, she's gonna squint and she'll say, Elagarthus. Is that you? Pretty sure it's him. Um, he'll eventually sort of look over and, and wave. He'll shout, I'm gonna get home! This is the way home! How long has he been doing that? Well, jeez. Um, when did she finally let him go? I mean, I think it was only a few days, but honestly, it could be a few months. Must be awful determined. Oh, maybe, maybe he'll stop long enough to talk. Now, well, them torches are so important to him. <coughs> we could probably. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh no. Sushi. Spicy. spicy. Um, <laughs> Those hot wings will get you. Well, if the man that fires is so important to him, we could probably smack them flying critters around a little bit, get him to leave them alone. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna. Can I tell what kind of creatures they are? Yeah, uh, roll a. Um, oh heavens, what is that? Nature. Yes. You've never seen anything quite like these before. Maybe they're a fey wild thing. Um, I've never seen anything like those before. <laughs> Would that be like a history check if I'm trying to remember if I've seen sure, them? Sure, yeah, you can do history. Yeah. Um... Um, you've, you, you think you've probably heard of stories of creatures like this, but, you know, there's a variety of creatures in the Feywild that, well, you know, like the owlbear, some believe that it came from the Feywild, others believe that a wizard created the owlbear. Um, and so it's sort of like that. It's this winged bird-like creature, but it has antlers like a, like a deer. 
Huh. Didn't... I guess these actually what? exist. <laughs> Not... Ooh. Hmm. Well, pretty sure this is some kind of weird breed of unicorn. Harmless, I'm... too, I bet, yeah? <laughs> That's one way of describing it, I guess. I kind of feel like when you roll a natural one on like a, a trying to like know something type of check, like you should instantly think you're an expert and like know exactly what they are. Like, right. <laughs> oh yeah, they're harmless. They're not. <laughs> if you cover yourself in blood, they won't. They'll, they'll not want to eat you at all. <laughs> Just play dead. Sounds really strange. I know, but. <laughs> Well, I guess we can see what we could do to help. Maybe keep an eye on those things. Maybe they just harass them, but... How big are they? Like, in the picture, they look like they're, like, bigger than a man. Yeah, they are large size. Okay. They look but awful. I... They look, they look kind of... I mean, they look goofy, but they awful big. I don't know if goofy is how I describe them. More ominous and menacing. Yeah. Uh oh, stop. So, Bren's gonna take out his um, bow. Just kind of keep it an arrow ready. Just kind of keep it ready. As we, I guess, try to get closer. Yeah, so there's these steps um, down that you can get a little closer to the. Um, Sort of the, the the crater that the lake is in. Yeah, because he this guy is he's he's he he went up one, tried to light it, they brought out the torch, they came back down, and he's going up another one, right? So yeah, gonna, yeah. So I think we'll get closer and we'll get to that one, and assuming that the pattern repeats, I guess wait for him to come back down, maybe and talk instead of trying to go up and meet him. I think we maybe is the plan. Unless somebody else wants to do something different. So yeah, eventually he will make his way back down and, and get in the boat. And again, you see them fly up and <sighs> use their wings to put out the flame he just lit. And he'll get in his little rowboat and, and come to the... Yeah, I try to wait. We try to get his attention and wave him over once he comes back down. So yeah, he'll he'll actually make his way to you and he'll say, "Oh, are you uh you trying to get home too?" Well, not immediately. Uh, Gleam here says that you might be uh, able to help us um, get rid of that witch. Indolin, get rid. Yeah. Well, I mean, get rid of her if you want. I'm getting away from her. Oh, I mean, like, like, get you know, get away from her, like, permanently. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah. She. uh... What do you know about that witch? Um. She knows oh, she's gonna be, or she's afraid of an eclipse. Or something like that, right? You know, she's pretty much a bitch. Ha! <laughs> That's true. Let me tell you a story. Um, and this, this guy, like, he's, uh, he, he doesn't look great. He, uh, his clothes are all messed up. You, I mean, yeah, if you had a guess, he, uh, he's been out here a while. Um, he's, he's an elvish man. Uh, and, and as you know, elves don't need sleep, and you're thinking he's gotten as little rest and sleep as, uh, as, as, you know, possible to try and do, as he has said, get home. Um, but he, he seems to still have a very determined attitude about, <laughs> about what it is he's doing. So he says, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I was, well, I was a noble knight for a kingdom. And a dragon came and attacked our city. And I was having a hard time dealing with it. 
And this, uh, well, this I thought was a kind witch came and rule number one, never strike a bargain with her. I told her I would, we agreed that I would come here and, uh, and, and, and live in her castle and help around for only but a year. And after a year, uh, I could go home in exchange for her dealing with the dragon. So she did. She, she took care of that dragon for us. And I came here as promised. And I don't know. I don't know if it's just terrible conditions or what. But man, that year, let me tell you, it felt a lot longer than a year. When you don't see the sun rise or fall, it's hard to tell how time works. And But eventually, she did say a year had passed. And that I could go. And I was excited. I was finally going to get to go home. And then she said the way to get home was to come out here and light all of these, uh, these uh, pillars. And the lake... Down there, well, it would supposedly turn into a portal I could jump into and get me home. Um, have you managed to light all of the pillars at once? <sighs> no. The. I mean, I get why they're upset, but the Greyhawk murmurs won't leave me alone. Is that what those are? Well, huh? I point to one of the flying things. Well, yes. Well, I guess they were the Greyhawk murmurs. And then Indolent turned them into uh, those creatures. Oh. Was that, was that a band of bards? Like the uh, prophecy goats? Well, I don't know anything about prophecy goats, but yes, yes, they were, uh... Well, you know, Indolin always wants a good show. Her castle is essentially a giant theater. So she, of course, convinced them to come and perform, and similar to me. They were trapped there for what felt like surely longer than a year, and, uh... Well... Their popularity grew, and, and, and they tried to use that as leverage to leave. Dead, she turned them into that, and I was not going to let that happen. So if this is how I have to get home, this is how I have to get home. But I think they're, uh, I think they're just jealous that I'm not one of the creatures. Mm. Do they talk? Not in that form, but they were great actors. They had... Was the, the lead had a beautiful voice. I look at the rabbit and then kind of huddle up with everybody. Like, I think I know how we can get close to the witch. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm scared. <laughs> well, what exactly are you suggesting? Well, I mean, not yet. But uh, um, if she she said that she likes uh, profit. She likes she likes performances and being entertained. And we've got an entertainer, and maybe like we could put together a band, and we could each learn to play an instrument. You know what? That's honestly better than what I was imagining. So when that time comes, okay, considered. But um, but yeah, maybe if she also she she maybe maybe the, they'll help us. And I kind of nod to the flying monsters. And maybe maybe we can communicate with them. They they can help us, like you know, get her if they you know maybe because if we get her, they can she can turn them back or something. Not a bad idea. And then Rabbit pulls out the uh, telepathy helmet. Says maybe uh, they can't talk to us, but maybe we could listen to it to what they're thinking. Yeah. And then I looked to the prince. I was like, "What else you got? You got any more dirt on her?" 
Oh, and was the dragon a moon dragon? Moonstone? I'm asking him, yeah. Is it a moonstone dragon? I... What dragon? Oh, the dragon that attacked him. I. Oh. Oh, great question. Lemmy, does it stay in here? No. Oh, it was a, a terrifying green dragon. Oh, okay. Wonder what she did with that dragon. We freed a dragon, but it wasn't. You green. freed a dragon? It's yeah, out it, there. Yeah, but it was a nice dragon. It just wanted to go find its lover. A dra oh my. Yeah, we've got we've got a. If you're interested in that kind of thing, Raxum over here's got a book. <laughs> all sorts of all sorts of pictures. <laughs> I learned things I didn't want to know. As I thought ducks were terrifying in their sexual habits, but dragons, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, does he know anything else? I mean, you might have a good point. If, uh, if, uh, if you want to get on her good side, just... Introduce yourself as an acting troupe, and I'm sure you'll get cast immediately in one of her plays. Oh, hey, that's a good idea. And one of the goats said something about that. But somebody had to stay on script. So no ad-libbing. No problem here. I don't know the meaning of the word. Well, should we go see if we could talk to those things? Maybe they can be reasoned with, and if so, maybe if they agree to help us, they'll, um, like, let you light up those things and get out of here. Well, yes, if there's a way to... to make that easier on me. Why are they bothering you so much, I anyway? I don't know. Like I said, I assume they're just jealous. Uh, I figured they'll eventually get tired and give up. I don't know, so it's a battle of wills. The battle Steve's wants wasn't so great. Well, you wanna, I'll look to a rabbit. You wanna, you wanna give that helmet a try if we get closer? See if they can be reasoned with? Uh, yeah, I'll give them um, any try once. One day I'm gonna learn how that works. Trying something once? Well the uh, Helm of Telepathy. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Yeah, sorry. I'm that player that doesn't have their shit together. We're <laughs> fine. It is Detect Thought. But is it just one creature? Is that how it works with the home? Or is it every creature? So, and you can actually communicate to others. Okay, yeah. Via your brain powers. I think it's just a creature. I don't think yeah. it's mass. Um, so click on that. Um, the first one you try to speak to completely shuts you out. 
the second one you try to communicate with or connect with, um, you're able to hear its thoughts. Uh, and you hear it say, You think you finally gave up? I don't, I don't know. No, he's not going to say it. He's going to say, I think he finally gave up. He's not talking to anybody. Um, whew. Maybe he'll finally just be at peace at staying here like the rest of us. Okay, and I can communicate back, huh? Yeah. It's not very, um, a very good attitude there, buddy. Whoa. You always got to fight. Now, who is that? Who is speaking to me? So I like Rabbit will wave his uh, hands out. <gasps> Little man, is it you? It is I, Bardo. What an odd name, Bardo. Have you ever thought of becoming a bard? <laughs> I know. I am actually a bard. Isn't it amazing? Oh. This is our friend Gonad the Barbarian and Pigwidgeon the Rider. I mean, Ranger. So. Um, we're just a band of uh, friendly travelers. A band? As in... Oh, more actors, more actors. And he starts, like, sort of, like, using his wings to, like, try to get his other creatures' attention. And, like, to, like, look at you. Is it working? I think so. I don't know. Um... So, yeah, we are a band of uh, entertainers, I would say. Oh, fantastic. By the way, my name is Archilus. Oh, very pleased to meet you. It's an interesting uh, kind of get-up you got going on there. Well, it's not the finest costume, but... It is a role I shall play while I have it. Have I heard of his name before in my bardic? Uh, uh sure. Roll mm -hmm. a history or, or, or if there's something else. I think history would probably be the best option. Um... Never heard of you. <laughs> I'm just seeing if there's... What would be... Because... Um, yeah, I'd say you've never heard of him, but, but you've heard of the Greyhawk Murmurs. So you've heard of this troupe before. Right. Uh, because they are a pretty popular um, group from the city of Greyhawk. Okay. Um, well, as it just so happens, I and my friends here, my uh, troop, um, were part of a acting, uh, show of entertainment in the, whatever the hell, Witchlight Carnival. <laughs> It's like whatever the hell it's all things. <laughs> it's been a while since we've been there. Yeah. So um I hear I hear there is a uh woman of prominence who is uh very interested in theater. And I think our show might be right up her alley. But since Are you referring to my wife? She's back. Oh, she's a lovely woman. Yes. She's part of our troop, too. Oh. 
Well, yes, of course. Um, we would like to, uh, you know, run our idea past you guys, maybe have a little collaboration and, uh, you know, get to meet this uh, wonderful person who appreciates theater. Oh, lovely, lovely. And he's going to try to get everyone's attention and then like, like uh, the others and have them um, come down for a show. Um, and you're able to get a closer look of these, at these creatures. Um, again, they're, they're large size, big, big birds, uh, massive talons. Their face almost looks furry as opposed to feathery. Um, and the rest of you, you kind of just hear cause, ah, you know, like eagle kind of cause as they land. And and the one you've made a connection with, uh, Rabbit, will say, "All right, let the show begin." Oh, so you're talking to them in your head, right? So yeah, yeah. none yeah. of you have any context of what's happening. So uh, Ben's is going to kind of look at you as these things come down and be like, is this okay? We're about to get eaten. So, okay. Rabbit's going to turn around and be like, Finn. Oh, shit. I mean, <laughs> Gonad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Draw your weapon and look menacing. All right, sure. Pulls his rapier out and does some uh, preliminary dances and whatnot with it. What? What is it? Not really sure who he's trying to intimidate, so. Rex, and make a dragon appear lizard if you can. <laughs> He, um, he ponders that for a moment. Hmm, I don't believe I have that spell. Okay, control the lighting. <laughs> Virna. Um, disappear and uh, um, make sure this thing doesn't eat me in the next five seconds. Are you asking me to hide? <gasps> Disappear. It was that not clear <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> <laughs> enough finds a rock that's suitable for her to hide behind. I don't know. He kind of like peeks around the corner and just watches. <laughs> and uh, Scott. Yeah, Scott the Selric. Uh, <laughs> the Selric, okay. <laughs> Uh, get the medic medical kit ready. <laughs> and then rabbit. Oh no. And then Bryn mount up and uh, get ready to charge uh, at Gonad. Oh, oh, okay. And then Rabbit will begin to uh, say, okay, and when I give the cue, uh, do what you think you should do. We got this, guys. Um, okay, do you want me to actually, like, hurt him? Uh, if you want it to be as realistic as you can, do what you want. Anyway, here we go. And so he starts uh, strumming on his lute. <laughs> and, says, um, and here we have before us Gonad the Fierce. <laughs> and, um, and Pigwidgeon the Ranger Rider. I raise my lance and 
go a salute to the creatures and then I lower it and point it at Finn and kind of give a questioning look to um, Rabbit and then I give Apple a little kick and <laughs> sort of start to trot forward, not at full blast, but <laughs> um, yeah, with the point of the lance aimed at Finn. <laughs> um. And they come across one another for the first time. And decide. Oh, you must be the fierce Gonad the Barbarian. I am Pigwidget here to defeat you for uh, defiling my village. Huh? What? Yes, we must fight now. It's your line. It's your line, Gonad. I line. I ain't fishing. Oh my heavens! And the silent <laughs> warrior scratches his head <laughs> and draws his weapon, and they commence. Oh, you want to scuffle? All right, I can get behind this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will defeat you. I sort of swing my try. lance. I swing my. I sort of swing my lance around like wildly, but I'm not trying to hit anything. Or I do it very slowly at him. Then clearly, <laughs> and so they can easily, easily. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In the battle which rages on for nigh on weeks. Oh, I'm so tired. It's been weeks that we have been battling. -ing. Until, and when the crack of lightning every 30 minutes cracks, um, a finger from the heavens uh, says, Enough of this! Ah, giant finger! <laughs> <laughs> and the two foes are fallen. And the dragon appears! Rar. Is that just Raxon as Raxon? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Finn, or, uh, uh, Finn leans forward and whispers something into uh, Apple's ear. It's like, my dad. And then, like, her and him just like roll over. And it's like, oh, I am vanquished. <laughs> oh, and I am dying. Meadows comes. Our mysterious Lady Queen, the Dark Elf, never to be seen, saving the day by dispatching the dragon. Rawr. <laughs> Verda comes out from behind the rock, just like wiping a tear from her eye. <laughs> <laughs> Are oh. you the damsel in distress? <laughs> oh, she's the hero. Have you not been paying attention? No, I, I know. Save the day. She was laughing, but, but the, the tear. I know, but yeah. Yeah, she, Rexon she, has a she, red she scarf. A little... <laughs> and she, um, I guess, pushes the track. <laughs> it's too funny. And Scott the cleric, or Selric in this case, goes over to sell these people some Rick candies. <clears throat> Here. <clears throat> Take these. You'll feel better. You may not look better, but you'll feel better. He hands each the the, the combatants a piece of candy. Selric's always trying to... Uh... You know, get you to hop on board with their thinking. I'll take one, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hands went over to the vanquished dragon, apparently. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> and so then with a crescendo and everyone says, OK, take a bow, everyone, take a bow. We'll turn around and say, OK, well, you know, it's a work in progress. But, yeah. Uh, 
the uh, yeah the they they flap their wings um everybody make me a performance check and uh in this moment while you're performing you all flash back to uh the carnival where you got acting lessons from candlefoot and so you get this role at advantage oh boy <laughs> Sounds about accurate so far. Who, who, who are we missing? Brindy. Rabbit. Okay. <laughs> wow. Because that was a that's a a, a, gr a group check. The narrator is amazing. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like I was there. <laughs> um. So yes. With, Sadly, I um, pressed the button. Oh, you pressed perception. Well, that seven is also something. A number. It makes more sense, honestly. Twenty-one. Sorry, I'm looking at all the stars now. Okay. Um. What? Give everyone uh, bardic inspiration with my song. That's true. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Finn. Thank you, Mark. I was doing that in my head. I just noticed that. Thank you. So yes, it is. A, it was close enough that I was going back and forth of like, what did they? So yes, the uh, a work in progress is the appropriate descriptor. Um, these creatures sort of flap their wings and and you think that they are those of you who don't have a connection to the one think maybe they're pleased they're not actively eating you so you think it's a good thing and yeah this um uh, uh what was alid something um our Achilles will tell you uh in your in your telekinetic connection well that's yes of course a young acting troupe you need to get out there and get your get your acting chops somehow but but you'll you'll get there you'll get there a, a good first attempt, indeed. Oh, very much. We thank you. And uh, if any help to point us in the right direction, or, you know, trying to get us a foot in the door, if you know what I'm saying, any pointers uh, would be much appreciated. Um, what does the lady like the most, I guess? Who, my, my lovely wife? And again, he points to one of the other... These other creatures. Uh, That's between she... me and her, sir. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> my, my, my. Well, well, sorry. While we have them distracted, could uh, the prince be trying to light the beacons? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That is good idea. As they like kind of turn around and whispers like, okay, so far they like what we've done. We're not going to get eaten. Um, That's good. Any ideas? Well, I mean, do they want to help us fight the witch to like get the curse off of them so they can be peoples again? Or do they like being um, whatever that is? Well... I don't really know. They seem pretty content. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know what they look like before. Maybe it's an improvement. Yeah. Or something might not be right with their minds, though. Maybe they've been here too long. That'll oh. happen. Well, um... It looks like he's trying to light the torches while they're distracted. Maybe we should keep them distracted. Wait, they can't understand me, can they? Uh, no, I hope not. Okay. Uh, are you speaking in common? Yeah, I'm just talking out loud. <laughs> they, they, they absolutely are looking at you. And, and the connection that you have, uh, uh, Rabbit, says, Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we all speak the common folk language, so yes. We, did you, we hear you. <laughs> we hear you. Uh, well, that's all part of the act. The uh, epilogue. 
behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry what he was just saying. How many of these pillars are there? Um, there's eight pillars. So I will then, since these things are kind of friendly with us, I'm going to ask him, so what, uh, what would you say you guys do here? <clears throat> well, we were the acting troop for that evil witch creeping Lynn. Anyway, apparently she didn't like our demands. Our, our rider became increasingly longer for, you know, I mean, we're very good. If you want us to stay here, you gotta pay up. We like our candies to be green only. And she just was not okay with that, and, um, well, we tried to escape, and, uh, not our finest moment. Hmm. <clears throat> He's gonna say... We've been... Honestly bored, and what else are we going to do in the... Admittedly, perhaps a little unfair, but... We've been preventing... That one over there from getting home just because, well, we weren't allowed to go home. We got turned into this. But you've you've entertained us for a while, perhaps. Perhaps we'll reconsider and allow him to do whatever it is he's trying to do to get him. Well, that would be a pretty rock and roll of you guys. That is to say, uh, loot and hurdy-gurdy of you guys. <laughs> Indeed. Um, okay, well, about that whole witch problem. Well, we've got kind of a similar problem. Is she going to turn you into creatures? Just oh, no. stay away, stay away. We Take your on... act on the road. Sorry. <laughs> we plan on making sure uh, she doesn't trick any uh, artists like us again. What is your plan for that? Well, basically, Gonad over there uh, is going to roll up ends and probably chop her up. Yo. Well, I <laughs> wish you luck on that. You know, um, are you aware that she can predict the future? That's how she got us. She knew we were going to run away, and so bird deer things well any help you might have would definitely be appreciated because so far that's my plan well as far as I know, she has a way to uh, see the future. After all, she, the, the prophecy goes, she knows how she's going to die, which is why she doesn't allow eclipses to happen. Mm, yeah. Are you, are you translating back and forth any at all, Rabbit? Oh, I thought that they were talking in common now. They no, they can understand common. Oh, but shit. They can't talk. They can only talk to you telepathically. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I wasn't clear. Can we that. just assume you're sort of translating back and forth then? Yeah, yeah. Please do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was my um, intent. I, I figured. I just well, wanted to make a double check in. in case you're like, no, that was all private. Um, 
Rin's gonna be thinking and then like, hmm, well if she knows, if she knows that we, if she can figure out the future, then maybe we should just never know what we're gonna do and just be, keep it all like, random and crazy. That's always worked for me. Which means we can't have a plan. Or we have to have lots of plans, but not know which one we're gonna pick. Hmm. That way it'll keep her all confused because there could be like lots of different possibilities. Like if somebody was shooting a bunch of arrows at you, you couldn't dodge all of them. Maybe like each of us should come up with a plan and then we should think very hard about a different plan. That's kind of what I was thinking, honestly. Uh, she knows the future, but how does she know? Does she read our minds or, or she just has a crystal ball that tells her, you know, that there's, you know, somebody just doesn't know everything. They can have a tool to do it. I agree, you know. I think it might be an act. That damn clown, he used to have an act that he could see the future. I bet there's a trick to it. Oh, so all we gotta do is figure out the trick. I bet... Uh, I'm going to, I would like to ask the, I would like to ask the, 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 uh, bird people question, but you're going to have to t tell it to them, my, well, they, my, my friend. They can hear you, so you can ask them. Okay. They're just, they they're, they're, their answer them. comes through. Rather. Right. Yeah. Was there any, uh, any clues to you guys leaving? Did somebody find out? Maybe she had a spy that found out that you guys were planning something? Um, they kind of, it looks like they're like, um, uh, consulting each other on this. Like, did you tell anybody? Did you tell anybody? Did you tell anybody? Um, and then he, he, uh, enters your mind, Rabbit, and, and he says, I don't believe we told anybody. Um, or no, no, nobody claims they told anybody. We had our own private quarters, and one night we decided, you know what? Tonight's the night. We're going to leave, and uh, well, we didn't get very far. She, uh, <laughs> she initially actually imprisoned us. And then she, I think, got annoyed at our crying and screaming in the uh, echoey dungeon and quote-unquote freed us, but in these forms. Hmm. She does, uh, I mean, the castle is covered in, uh, goblin guards. That's who originally arrested us and threw us in the prison. But I don't know that I don't know how she knew. Uh, we can deal with goblins. Well, say we do figure out a way to take care of her situation that she's created. Would you uh, be on our side? Would you uh, render us aid if we called they again kind of consult each other you hear squawks and calls burr, burr. Um, and he turns back and says 
Yes, I think I think we could do that. We could uh, find ourselves back towards the castle, and after all, we too deserve revenge. You don't know how to turn us back, do you? Do you think you could do that? Afraid not, my friend. Well, all right, we can attack in this form. These talons haven't done a whole lot. I don't want to get them dirty, but, you know. Scratch at her. They, they, they should wait for our signal, though, because we got some other stuff to do. Indeed. Of course, of course, and as you know, um, you can attack her all day long, but if you actually want to sort of like those like his wing across his neck like a killer kind of symbol um you'll have to somehow make sure that there's a eclipse and i don't know how we're going to do that in cloud covered sky yeah yeah that's what we gotta work on you know anything about those lightning towers you ever been close to those Um, uh, he's gonna say, uh, they, they lead all the way up to the castle. Um, I don't know, I just know that Indolin seems to be harvesting lightning for... For her castle. Hmm. It'll have to be investigated. Maybe those cords know something about it. For certain. Well, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Of Wait, one of those is a lady? Yeah, that one down there. Oh, okay. Shh. <laughs> um and thank you for letting the prince be on his way hopefully we can get through this together indeed and good luck in your acting studies <laughs> you'll get there one day yeah thank you thank you Um, and, and they'll say, see you at the castle, and fly off. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs> it would take a miracle. Bye-bye. You know, uh, our little play here that, uh, we, we were great at... <laughs> Might I add? Uh, yeah, well actually, done. <laughs> <laughs> you got us out of it somehow. Actually, gives me an idea. Uh, and oddly enough, the inspiration actually comes <laughs> comes from within this very group. Uh, uh, Brynn wanted to uh, put a costume and make uh, a unicorn. And since we're now an acting troupe, and we had ran into a half of an acting group before, maybe we should make our own costumes and simulate the eclipse. Just like what they had before. It's actually kind of smart. Yeah. Like I said, the inspiration came from you, Brynn. That's am, what's am, what's even scarier. <laughs> hey, I am the but, smartest guy I know. Uh, that you are, my friend. God, small group he knows. Yeah, he's <laughs> as smart as a pig. <laughs> so I know that the real challenge will be to try to find some sort of uh costumes or 
craft supplies or something in this dreadful place. But uh, maybe maybe those birds were on the right track. That you know, you got to find something to to make into the eclipse. And it's like, well, here we are. We can be the eclipse. Um, you. <laughs> It's been a while since I've described the, the NPCs you're traveling with. That's when you look over at Gleam and you remember that she's where she has a moon mask. So she's an acrobat, you know, wearing like spandex kind of clothing she can move in. That's blue and silvery, very moon-like, and she has a mask on of a moon. Yep. Right, See? and that's why she was banished, right? Because she was the moon. She was the moon, and her sister was the sun. She doesn't yeah. have a sh- and she doesn't have a shadow like me. And that one goat said something about a torn shadow. You see, we're all on the right track already. <clears throat> uh, and she- she'll actually pipe up and say, uh, "We, that's a great idea. We certainly can look for costumes away if we don't find any." There is a pretty large costume shop in the castle. <laughs> no, everybody keeps thinking the eclipse happens in the sky and it's all dreary. But we can make this ourselves. With lights and shadows and costumes, I think we might be able to pull this off somehow. Yeah, Scoot, I think that's a good idea. Like <laughs> You're you're part of the inspiration of this, my friend. So, but also the other thing is we might need the allies because uh, uh, a castle full of goblins is going to be a little bit more than what we can handle. We got we got we got these guys, and we've got the flower and the bee and and gleam, and maybe we could get these cords and the other fellas to help us. Like she said, if we if we can, you know, like uh, Baron is a little dragon, but he said we have to figure out their uh, dispute. I get them to get along and work together. Make this everybody's fight, not just ours. It worked for us before, getting help from other folks. So yeah, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Very much. Well, we gotta dress up like unicorns again. Those are great costumes. Well, maybe somebody can be a unicorn, but uh, the, uh, we'll be Apple, a... Apple. Apple is pretty convincing with the costume oh. I made for her. <laughs> that was spectacular. I was so beautiful. Roll a deception roll. <laughs> well, should we go um, find this cord now that we got the prince out of here? Well, the prince is still lighting the beacons, but the, yeah. the creatures have... Uh, flown away, so he's able to. So you look up, and you can see he's actually lit several of the beacons already, and they're staying, uh, they're staying lit up. They're staying uh, on fire. Um, uh, and 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 he ends up getting to the last one, and it lights up. And as it lights up, uh, you can see that uh, reflected in this in this pond. Uh, you see a forest of ancient trees shrouded in mist. Orm in the pond. He rushes down one of the beacons and he comes to you and he says, Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I don't have much to repay you, but here. And he hands you a map of Yawn, uh, the area you're in. And, and he, he says... says uh, I'm sorry it's not much, but <laughs> I won't be needing this anymore. And he laughs and he plunges into the water. It ripples out across the surface and as it does, the forest fades away and the, the beacons fade out. Um, but you have 
map now, and you're actually... Yeah, is he still in the water? He didn't get through the panel. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <not. laughs> I, damn it! Sorry, we're keeping the map. <laughs> You guys I guess I'm working here. here. Yeah, yeah, you're down here. Yeah. That always reminds me of like the old school Nintendo Genesis stage select screens for like Castlevania and stuff. <laughs> the lightning rods. Okay. Cool. Do 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 do. And when you came to this land, you were further up. You were like around here, up north. And you made your way down. Um, so Gleam's going to point out on the map and she'll say, Yes, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, this makes sense. So yeah, up here, up here, Motherhorn. That's where, that's where, uh... uh what is her name? Indolin is. Um... So we probably don't want to go up there anytime soon. Uh, although, well, when we're ready. Um, but here, down here, this is the mines. The mine. This is where the um, the Briganox live, and I'm pretty sure that's where we can find a secret entrance. So if we go there, we can travel through the mines underground to Motherhorn uh, if we want to enter from beneath. Uh, but if we want to go see the cords, that's going to be over here at their hinge. Yeah, we're supposed to go see them first, so I guess that's where we gotta go. That way, there's a south. Uh, it's kind of south-ish. So, it, well, yeah. <laughs> what the dragon meant, and I realized wasn't clear, was that the road forks here, and you could go to the west or to the east for... Cords or Briganox, and that to the west is what. <laughs> as soon as Finn starts, like, you know, talking about directions, Brynn's gonna pull somebody aside and be like, I liked it better when he had no sense of direction, and I got the lead. <laughs> yeah, give me that compass. Hey, man, that's mine. I don't even know where we're going. I'm just saying that way south. Oh, I guess we can head that way and try to meet up with these cords and figure out what we can do to get them to give us a hand. Curious why they're not getting along with these other fellows. So as far as the, the fellow with lighting the torches and such, mm -hmm. did we just walk away from that or were we going to help him try to light his torches? Oh, he he did it all. Okay. So, like, I, during I, that whole spiel, I mean, I we could argue it with the time, like, maybe you did help him after you finished, but I sped ahead. He was able to light all the torches. Either you guys helped him if, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> if you wanted to do more with that. I More often than not, I assume it's me missing something, so I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to check. No. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, he was able to, from what you could tell, successfully get home. Um, for a portal revealed itself, he jumped in it, and he's gone. So, as far as you know, he got home. Jump into the watery portal and find out it's concrete on the other side. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah like a Twilight Zone episode. I have to step away. I'll be right back. Sure. Off to meet the cords. Yeah. So. 
So yeah, you begin to make your way south. <clears throat> um, uh, moving slowly, carefully along these tight turns, craggy areas. Um, uh, anybody who wants can make a perception check along this this path. Oh my goodness. Oh my heavens. Oh wait, where is that? Um... Uh, 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 Bryn, roll a d8 for me for that nat 20. <clears throat> Seven. Seven. Um, as you're walk, so I'll, I'll, I'll let everybody know what they see as they're walking. But um, Bryn, you actually you catch a whiff of something, and you look over, and um, you just see sort of sitting um on a like on a rock, but like kind of tucked away in a cave, a a um. A large, like, family size, like a large, uh, uh, full-sized, uh, flaky meat pie. Oh, hey, look over there. You guys smell that? Hey, look! And I point it out. Doesn't that look delicious? Do I see it? Yeah. Yeah, point it out. Yeah, that's amazing. I'll uh, split it with you. Yeah, it's just the two of us. We won't have to share with anyone. Just the and two I, of us. <laughs> I draw my short sword. <laughs> Against who? That's me, Pi. I'm going to cut it in half. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> What's that delicious smell? Now there's meat pie. I think it's big enough we can share with everybody. I wonder who would just leave a meat pie out like this. That's true. Where are those muffins from before? <laughs> uh, you eat it first. Okay. I'll cut it up into pieces and then I'll take a nibble at my part portion. It's delicious. Oh, so good. It's the best meat way. What kind of meat is it? Um, what kind do you want it to be? Not pork. I was gonna say not pork, probably beef. Goat. Okay. Goat. Long yeah, meat. it's goat. Exactly. It's goat. Good call. Yes. <laughs> I think it's goat. <laughs> Minced goat. Hmm. I'll scarf it down. Give Apple her, her share. I try to offer some to the flower, but I'm like not sure where to put it. The flower. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. But maybe you could just smash it up into the dirt and absorb it with your feet. How do you eat? Hey, I made a rhyme. Uh, I am a vegetarian, so don't don't worry about me. You're a veget- oh, wouldn't that be like cannibalism? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect that it would be chlorophyll related. Well, precisely, I uh, mostly get what I need from the sun. You're a sun eater? Wait, isn't he a sunflower? He's a dandelion. Oh, okay. You've met a scarecrow. You've met a tin can and a dandy lion. Oh, haha, I get it. You just need your ruby red slippers now. Oh, yeah. My poor cat is broken. <laughs> what are you doing to him? <laughs> um, yeah, everybody, you eat the pie. Anybody who eats the pie, it's delicious. 
Um, you're immune to poison for the next 24 hours. Yay! Mm, nice. Because it is poison. <laughs> yeah, I meant because we're dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're immune to death too. <laughs> It was poisoned the whole time. Uh, after you've enjoyed this delicious pie, um, Scoot is a little distracted by the pie, but everybody else, um, you begin to hear what sounds like a, a, like somebody ringing bells. And they're, they're walking closer to you. They're not saying any. You don't hear voices. You just hear, it sounds like a, a small group of somebody ringing bells. Hey, you guys hear that? It's bells. Maybe it's a party? So, like, Mela, is it like alarm bells? Or is it like a chorus of bells? Is it like a music ish quality to it? Or is it just like random, like. It's like, um, you know, like a. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I know. I'm sorry. I'm thinking. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, when somebody's sort of walking through a town, just ringing a bell as if it's make an like announcement. a town crier. Okay. Yeah, but no one is actually saying anything yet. So it's a, it's a, it's a constant pattern to this bell sound, but it's not music necessarily. It's just like ding, ding. Is ding, it like ding. one bell, or is it like multiple bells? Um, it, it's multiple. Oh, okay. Maybe it's some kind of festival. Well, it's more solemn sounding than that, but... Oh, uh, okay. Brendan, doesn't know. He doesn't okay. know anything about it. He doesn't speak spell. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> oh, I guess we should get closer and see what all that clanging's about. Is it coming from the general direction we're going? Or is it, like, off the beaten path? Uh, yeah, it's kind of going... It's It's like they're gonna come towards you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I lick the pie grease off my fingers and uh, start to lead the group that direction. Um, yeah, so eventually you see coming down the path um, a line, because you can't really walk two by two here, but a line of um, eight small creatures you would probably guess by the color of their hands ringing their bells, they are goblins. Um, but you don't see their faces because they're each wearing a different type of headdress. Um, of, 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 uh, there are different animal skulls that have been decorated. So one wears the skull of a badger, another a ram, a wolf. Um, hello. And uh, they're just sort of walking towards you, ringing their bells. Ch -ch 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 -ch. That's an odd group of goblins. If you have any ham, you should protect it now. Oh, that was the <laughs> other guy. Ham. I, 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 I care to hide apple. I would say <laughs> apple, apple, scared. Um, I guess if I get close enough, I, like, well, I guess I look to, I look to Gleam and the flower and, like, um, do you know these guys? I have no idea. No, uh, Gleam's gonna say, sort of shrug and say, I don't, I know a lot of goblins serve Indolin, but I don't, I don't know. I've never seen this. <sighs> Did we talk to, uh, try to talk to them or like get out of the way and hide? Well, okay. Uh, I was gonna say the 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 first one will actually approach you if you allow him. Oh, okay, yeah. If they're not looking threatening, I'm happy. To not leave. at all. No, they're it's... just sort of walking, yeah. um, at a, at a casual, calm pace. And so the first one will come up to you and like like the leader you assume because they're he's in the lead, and he'll say, "Hello." We are the dead ringers. Is there someone on the other side you'd like to speak with? I looked to a rabbit. Is that another band from the 70s? 
I have, have no idea. Uh, not me. No, I don't know. The other side of what? Oh. The afterlife. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. We can speak to anyone on the other side that you wish in exchange for a trinket or treasure of yours. I mean, I can't think of anybody. I look at the others. Well, if we cross paths again, let us know. Good day to you. Bye. Yeah. That was weird. The dead ringers who speak with the dead. Yeah, maybe they were from the 90s, kind of gothic era. It be. On our way, I guess. So yeah, you continue down um, a few more hours of walking. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Um, you, uh, you, you, you find yourselves getting, or getting closer. Um, you see another interesting thing on the road coming towards you. You see a pageant wagon. Uh, it, it, it's not speeding, but it's moving far faster than this group of goblins. Um, what's interesting, though, is this wagon is not being pulled by any sort of beast. It's just moving on its own somehow. Though there is a, a... A rider, if you will, uh, sitting in in the front, uh, a cloaked, hooded figure steering this wagon towards you, and uh, and it stops just before it runs into you. Hey, traveler! Everything okay? Uh. He'll pull a cord and a curtain parts on this, like on the side of this wagon, and it becomes a little puppet show. And you watch as okay, uh, six marionette puppets, each one that looks like each of you, pops up Ooh. on um, on this little stage, if you will, and essentially. Everything that you've done in the Fae Wild is reenacted via marionette puppets. Um, uh, or, I'm sorry, rather, everything that you've done in this realm. So when you first came to Yawn and yeah. you, you met the flower, you met the you met Gleam, um, everything you've done so far. And it ends with you walking down this path with a little wagon running up to you, and you standing around the wagon, watching this wagon. And then a little tiny person at the wagon forward, and that wagon's curtains pull open. Is anyone else freaked out by this? Yeah, I definitely shouldn't have licked that toad. I didn't lick a toad. I think I'm seeing the same thing you are. Is it just the marionettes, or does there anybody operate? It doesn't look like anybody's operating it. Um, hey, guy, what's your deal? He will hand you six tickets. And the tickets say 
good for one private audience in the Moongrave. No strings attached. Um, I, I get it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you got a name, mister? Every, the whole thing disappears. Ah! But, um, that was something. I think that was an elaborate invitation. I don't have a time on it, but if what they said about her is true, I guess she's gonna know when we get there regardless. Or someone's watching us. She knows what we're doing. I look around for a spy. It's not me. I don't like her. And this might sound silly, but maybe those lightning rods are a little bit more than just what they seem. It'd be... All the more reasons to try to get rid of them, I think. Because if we're presented with all our movement wherever we have traveled in this place, maybe they got eyes too. How could be? Oh boy. How do you... Stop those. It's just Maybe that to be the cords would know. Yeah, we should like oh. find them. <laughs> but also, if that is true, that's a big if. Maybe the way through the mines is the best way to get there by surprise. Indeed. So. I don't say it. Oh, shush. shush. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully just eyes and no ears. <laughs> now on. Now on, we take turns with the helmet. Just pass it around and tell me when I just think to each other. <laughs> Too silly. Alright, well, yeah, um... Yeah, I think we still have, we need to figure out what the cords know, if they know anything, and if they can help. Or at least stop whatever mayhem that uh, this witch has sown between them and uh, the other folk. the Gorignax or whatever. Yep. Onwards we go. Yeah, let's just get going then, right? Yep. So, the last bit of your journey, you find yourself having to climb up, 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 up a uh, boulder-strewn plateau. Um, but I think that's... I think that's a good stopping point for tonight. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds up and away. Good to me. Yeah. As always, thank, thank you for running. Yeah. Thanks for playing. I can't believe <laughs> for, I didn't for showing up. <laughs> What was that? I couldn't oh, think of for anybody it. to uh, to talk with the Dead Ringers about. Yeah, me either. They'll, sure uh, they... they'll show up again. Right. <laughs> when we're dead. <laughs> Wait, maybe we are dead. I didn't think to even give you guys fair warning about, but maybe you'll see them again. You know, <laughs> we can make that happen. <laughs> think about it. Yeah. 